So, welcome to today's lecture. What we will do today is uh, talk about a stability problem again, but uh, this is uh, will be something which does not involve any fluid motion. Okay, And uh, in particular, we are going to talk about Turing patterns. So, Turing patterns are basically uh, uh, patterns which arise when you have an interaction between reaction and diffusion. Okay, And um, the motivation for this is you would have seen uh, many patterns on the animal uh, skin. For example, you have uh, the zebra which has stripes, yellow and black, uh, white and black stripes. You have the leopard, you have the tiger which has uh, a pattern. And so the question is, uh, how do these patterns arise? Is there a way for you to actually describe uh, the formation of these patterns? Okay. So, uh, of course, there is a, a theory which has been proposed and that is what we are going to discuss. And uh, what we will discuss at this stage is the basic theory which does not involve any fluid motion. Okay. But uh, the emphasis is in uh, just understanding how uh, reaction and diffusion and what are the kind of features reactions have to possess for you to actually see these kinds of patterns. So, with whatever we have done so far in the course, we should be able to get some insight about uh, this. Okay. Um, the basic idea is when uh, an organism is growing, okay, there are many cells which are going to, uh, it starts with one cell, it divides, it pr proliferates, lots of chemical reactions going on. There is also transfer, uh, transport primarily by diffusion. So, if the chemicals are going to be such that there is going to be a reaction and there is going to be diffusion, is it the possible that if these can rearrange themselves, which can finally give rise to some kind of a pattern. Okay. So, this is something which is not being forced uh, by anybody outside, but it is just that the intrinsic feature of the system is uh, what is causing this. So, whether this can actually give any uh, insight into the formation of patterns. So, what we are going to talk about today is Turing patterns. And uh, possibly another keyword for you to search is morphogenesis. Okay. So, what are we trying to do? We want to understand formation of spatial patterns on animal skin. For example, the stripes on a zebra, maybe the spots on a leopard, etc., etc. Okay. So, that is what we want to try and do. Idea is um, during the growth of the embryo, we have chemical reactions and cell proliferation. Okay. The cells are going to multiply and they are going to grow okay. and the chemical reactions also taking place simultaneously. So, is it possible 
that uh, the interaction between these chemical reactions and as the thing grows there is going to be some kind of a gradient in the concentrations okay it is possible that this gradient in the concentrations can actually give rise to some kind of a pattern formation okay that is the question we are asking okay can gradients in concentration arise in the presence of reaction and diffusion that is the question okay. So, the question which uh, Alan Turing basically asked is so that the Turing pattern is of the, the name of the fellow who actually started this was let us consider a system where there is no diffusion taking place. So, to begin with we will keep a, the system very simple, we will talk about only two variables which are actually interacting with each other. So, let us say that u and v are concentrations of two chemical species. Okay. And the idea is that the reaction going on between these two species and the reaction kinetics is going to be de uh, defined in terms of some kind of an expression, okay. first order, second order, whatever it is. So, we like to know if we have no diffusion, okay, the concentrations. of u and v change u to reaction okay and that is going to be given by du by dt equals f of u comma v and dv by dt equals g of u comma v. So, what does f and g represent? they represent the kinetics. Clearly, the kinetics will depend upon the concentrations of the species u and v and I am just writing it in a very abstract form instead of telling you this because one of the questions we are asking is what should be the property which f and g has to possess in order for you to actually see a spatial pattern. That is the question which we are trying to ask. It is not that if you put first order reaction here and second order reaction here it is going to ha happen. So, there are certain properties which f and g have to possess and uh, that is the, so what are these properties, okay. And we like to see uh, whether our analysis in terms of this linear stability that we have been doing so far can actually give us some insight. This analysis is slightly different in the sense that we do not need to worry about things like kinematic boundary condition and stuff like that. U and v remember are concentration of species, so that is the only similarity. U and v earlier were velocity components, but here is concentration of species. Okay, so F and G, F and G represent reaction rate expressions. Okay, our question is, what should be the property or features of f comma g to get patterns that is what we are asking. So, what we are going to do is we are going to pose the problem as follows, we are going to find a steady state for this system. Okay, and you all know how to find the steady state for this system. So, the steady state is given by f of 
USS comma VSS equals zero. D of USS comma VSS equals zero. That's the steady state. Clearly, it is spatially uniform. There is no concentration gradient. Okay, so it is. Spatially uniform. It only, the variable is, is only a dynamic system, it does not change with uh, space. Now, I am going to assume it is a stable steady state. Okay. Assume this is a stable steady state. Now, I am going to add diffusion to the system. Okay. I am going to say that mass earlier my steady state was spatially uniform. Now, I am going to add diffusion and when I add diffusion what is going to happen? I will have a spatial dependence. Right? Normally, our understanding of diffusion is diffusion is something which helps you to homogenize concentration. Supposing there are two in a vessel, you have two regions, one with high concentration, one with low concentration. What will diffusion do? As a result of diffusion, everything becomes uniform. If you wait for a sufficiently long time, if diffusion is added to the system as a mass transfer mechanism, then at the end of the day, you will have concentration being uniform everywhere. Right? So, if I were to add diffusion, you would normally think diffusion has a tendency to homogenize concentration gradients. It will not create concentration gradients. Okay. So, what we are going to do now is we are going to add diffusion to the system, to the system here and say that actually there is reaction and diffusion both taking place and we are going to ask the question whether diffusion can actually destabilize the system, whether adding diffusion can actually result in an instability which can give rise to a spatial pattern. Okay. The basic idea is the same as whatever we have done so far in our uh, earlier examples. But then, uh, so the method, methodology is going to be the same. We have a steady state, we do the linearization and then we can talk about this uh, stability. Okay. So, what we are going to do now is we add diffusion. to the system. Okay. Diffusion um, homogenizes concentration variations. It makes the concentration uniform in a system. Our question is, can diffusion and reaction give rise to patterns and if, if the answer is yes, what are the conditions? What are the properties which F and G have to satisfy? Okay. That is what we are trying to do. Okay. Let us go up to the uh, problem where we have uh, the spatially uniform solution uniform system which is that that the ODE So, 
So if I say that the steady state this is a two dimensional system, right? If I tell you that the steady state is stable and that is the assumption which you are making, we are assuming that the steady state is stable, the spatially uniform steady state is stable, what do you uh, infer from that? The USS, comma VSS is stable, okay? That is given to you. Now, if it is stable, that means if I had done the linearization and if I had calculated the eigenvalues and this is what people have done earlier in the course, then the eigenvalues are going to be negative, okay? And this will happen when you, your Jacobian matrix, the matrix which comes on linearization satisfies certain properties, right? So what is the Jacobian matrix? This implies that the lambdas of the Jacobian matrix J have negative real part. Okay, but what about the Jacobian matrix itself? It is the partial derivative of f with respect to u, partial derivative of f with respect to v, g with respect to u, g with respect to v. Okay, I mean, if you do the linearization, that's what you would get, and write it in a vectorial form. We've done this earlier in the course. Now, what about the eigenvalues of the system? How do you find the eigenvalues? The determinant of j minus lambda i must be equal to 0 or the determinant of f u minus lambda f v g u and g v minus lambda, the, de the determinant must be equal to 0, okay? So, this implies f u minus lambda times g v minus lambda zero or lambda squared minus lambda times Okay. Now, uh, I am not going to prove this, but you can prove this to yourself. The conditions for stability, this is stable, this uh, has real part of lambda negative if f u plus g v is negative and f u g v minus f v g u is positive. Okay, which basically means the trace of J is negative and the determinant of J is positive. Remember, I just want to emphasize that this is true only for a two dimensional system, whatever I have written here. If you have a higher order system, this is not true. Okay, if you have a third order system, you need additional conditions, and in fact, these conditions will change. Um, point I am trying to make here is basically if the trace is negative that means this particular polynomial will have no change in the signs of the coefficients of lambda. This is positive, this is positive, that is positive and if you go back one of the necessary uh, conditions for uh, roots to have a negative real part is no sign change. It is also a sufficient condition for a quadratic. For higher order systems you need additional conditions, okay. So this no sign change is a necessary and sufficient condition for quadratic, but this is just basic theory. You can, you know, analyze this in many different ways and you can come to this conclusion. So, what I am trying to tell you here is that I have assumed that the spatially uniform state is stable. That means my f and g satisfy these conditions. Yeah. 
calculated at the steady state. At the steady state. These are calculated at the steady state, correct. The, this is evaluated at the steady state, yes. The derivatives are evaluated at the steady state because what I have done is I have uh, done the linearization around the steady state. Okay? So, these are calculated at the steady state. So, now what we want to do is this is given to me. Okay, you are right, this is at the steady state. Now, whatever I am talking about is at the steady state, not in general. Now, what I want to do is I want to go back and introduce my diffusion. So, when I introduce my diffusion, I in introduce my spatial derivative. It also has this uh, increases the mathematical complexity. So, OD have a partial differential equation, right. So, what I am going to do is I am going to solve, look at this system. We have du by dt. When we add the diffusion, I have du by dt equals du d square u by dx squared plus f of u comma v and dv by dt equals what I want to uh, emphasize here is I am taking two different values for my diffusion coefficient. Okay, basically, I want to have some flexibility. I don't want to say that the uh, two species are, you know, diffusing the same rate. That means I'm constraining myself. I want to, you know, make this special pattern happen. So I want to have as much flexibility as I want to have this uh, happen, to make it happen. So I'm keeping du and dv different. Okay, the diffusion coefficients are different. To keep my life simple, I'm just assuming transport only in one direction, only in x direction. Okay, just like what we were doing earlier. If you want to complicate your life, you can do other things. But well, I just want to in introduce diffusion. We are looking in one direction, and so as always, what we will do is we will look for an infinite span in the x direction because then that helps me look for periodic solutions in the x direction. Okay, and then th we can find what the critical wave number is, critical wavelength is, if there is one. Okay, so du and dv and dv are different okay to get flexibility and then in the x direction we have an infinite extent. The point is, even if you didn't have infinite extent, if you had a finite extent and if you prevented the uh, species from leaving the boundary, okay, which means the flux is 0, du by dx is 0. The infinite extent means I am not looking for any, uh, there is no boundary condition I am imposing. But if you had a finite chamber and if the species cannot leave, that means the flux is 0, that means the derivative is 0. Okay, if we have a finite extent in the x direction and the species cannot leave, then what is the boundary condition I am going to have? du by dx equals du dv by dx equals 0. Derivatives are 0, no flux. Okay. The, why am I talking about this? Because I want to emphasize that if USS VSS is a solution to this system, then USS VSS is also a solution to this system, it is also a steady state solution. For the infinite span, it does not matter, it goes off to infinity, I am not talking about boundary conditions at all. 
for a finite point of height, fluxes are zero, then constant means flux will be zero. Okay, so if I have USS VSS is a solution, the steady state for this system without diffusion is also a steady state for the system with diffusion. Okay, it satisfies the differential equations and it satisfies the um, boundary conditions. Okay, so it is a steady state. Now the question is: Is it stable? Okay, so if it is stable, that means that's the state you're going to see. If it turns out that it can be unstable, now what I've done is I've introduced two additional parameters, du and dv. So the rates of these diffusions can possibly make something which was stable unstable. So that's basically I want to try and get conditions for this instability and spatial patterns in terms of these diffusion coefficients and in terms of f and g. That's the idea. Okay. So USS comma VSS is a steady state of the reaction diffusion system where there is reaction and where there is diffusion because USS is constant so second derivative is 0, time derivative is 0, F is 0 already okay. Same thing for V it satisfies boundary conditions. Question is, is this steady state stable? And clearly the stability of the steady state will depend upon the diffusion coefficients because these are the two additional parameters which have come into the picture. Okay. Depending upon the diffusion coefficients, this can be stable or unstable. So what we want to do is we want to find out if at all it is possible to have conditions on du and dv, the diffusion coefficients which can make this unstable. Okay. So what do we do? We do a linearization of the reaction diffusion system okay we linearize the reaction diffusion system so what did we have u tilde equals u minus uss v tilde equals v minus vss Okay, these are my perturbation variables and these are small okay. and uh, I substituted over there in that equation and what do I get? du tilde by dt equals du d square u tilde by dx square okay. plus you do the linearization of f around the steady state you get f sub u u tilde plus f sub v, v tilde okay and you get d v tilde by d t is this clear? So all I am doing since I mean you all are experts in doing linearization by now I am just linearizing okay plus g u u tilde plus g v v tilde. Okay, I want to make sure I have not done anything silly. Great, so yeah. So that if we have finite extent in x direction, x direction series cannot heal, then del u by del x is equal to del u by del x is equal to zero. At the boundary, at the boundary, that's only at the boundary. Yeah, correct. This is at the boundary. That's my boundary condition. So what I have to do is, I will do what I have done earlier, write this in a vectorial form okay and uh, I am going to write okay, we will talk about the situation where it is infinite in extent okay. So what do I do, u tilde is a function of x and t and I am going to write this as u star e power sigma t times sin alpha x 
infinite in the x direction. So I'm looking for periodic solutions in the x direction. Okay, is linear. So I'm talking about the uh, linearized problem, grows exponentially in time, <laughs> like doing Laplace transform, Fourier transform, and that's the amplitude. Okay, we're looking for conditions under which I have non-zero u star. So now I'm going to substitute this in that equation over there. And when I put du tilde by dt, I get sigma e power sigma t sin alpha x u star equals du. When I differentiate this twice, I get minus alpha squared du u star e power sigma t sin alpha x plus f u u tilde is u star e power sigma t sin alpha x. Then plus f v v star e power sigma t sin alpha x. So u and v are basically uh, kind of in phase spatially. Okay. What happens now? I can actually strike off this e power sigma t sin alpha x everywhere. And that tells me that the assumed form of the solution is a possible solution. Okay, if I could not have done this striking off, that means what I have assumed is wrong. I am assuming v and uh, u tilde, v tilde, u tilde both are of the similar form. Okay, v tilde is also of the same form, same thing. So, this gives me sigma u star equals minus alpha square du u star plus f u u star and then f v plus f v v star. If you did the same thing for the other equation, I have done this for one equation, I have got to do it for the other equation, I will get sigma v star equals minus alpha square d v v star okay, plus g u u star plus g v v star. Okay. That is what I would get. Now, actually the sigma is my eigenvalue which tells me whether it is stable or unstable. Okay. I had lambda earlier, but sigma is the growth rate. The real part of sigma being negative indicates stability, remember that. So, I am going to write this in a vectorial form. When I write this in a vectorial form, I get sigma u star v star equals f u minus alpha square d u then I f v u star is g u and I have g v minus alpha square d v. Okay. So, what we have done is I have just added diffusion, the steady state is the same, I am doing the linearization to find out the stability of the steady state. Okay. When I do the linearization, I follow the usual method and take order of epsilon terms, these perturbations are of order epsilon. So, just take the first order terms okay. and then I get these linearized equations. Since it is infinite in the x direction, I am looking for periodic solutions in the x uh, exponential in time, it is first order and I proceed. And when I proceed, this is what I get and this is exactly what you people did earlier in your uh, the other stability problems. Okay. Now, I want you to understand that this is my new Jacobian matrix which has the diffusion included. So, earlier when we did not have diffusion, these guys were 0. Okay, and you had a Jacobian matrix containing only these four elements. Now, when the diffusion is included, I am getting on the diagonal elements two extra contributions okay, and that is what is basically being reflected here. Now, since this is again a two dimensional system, what are the conditions for stability? The conditions for stability are that the trace must be 
negative and the determinant must be positive. Correct. I mean, because it is a two dimensional system, all, all I am saying is now that the Jacobian matrix is modified. Okay. We have a, a modified Jacobian matrix. We have a modified Jacobian matrix. Okay. And the Jacobian matrix is given by Fu minus alpha square du. G u f b and g v minus alpha square d v. For the stability, stability of the steady state or for other in uh, okay for the stability or for the let us say instability for instability of the steady state with the diffusion added. Either trace must be negative okay, let us do like this, let us do like this. For let us talk about stability itself. For stability of the steady state, the trace, trace of J must be negative. Okay. Trace of J must be negative means F u plus G v minus alpha square times D u plus D v must be negative. That is when diffusion is added, I want the steady state to be stable. So, when will that happen? I am looking at the one condition first. I am looking at this condition. Now, what, what do I already know? In the absence of diffusion, I have already said that the system is stable because if the system is unstable for the uh, without diffusion, then there is no point in talking about the stability with diffusion. Okay. So, I already know that F u plus G v is negative, F u plus G v is the trace of the system. So, F u given we know or we have F u plus G v is negative, that is what we started off with. So, if f u plus g v is negative and alpha square of course is positive, diffusion coefficients are positive, that means this is always going to be negative. So, what I am trying to say is that for the system with the diffusion, the trace is always going to be negative. Okay. So, we, when we add diffusion, trace is always negative. That means, the trace condition cannot be violated and it cannot give you an instability. Okay. Now, we have to look for the other condition because both the conditions have to be satisfied simultaneously the trace and the determinant. In order for it to be stable, in order for this two dimensional system to be stable, the trace and the determinant both have to be satisfied. I am saying that the trace is satisfied. Now, what about determinant? Let us look at the determinant of the system. So, the determinant of that system tells me, sir, yeah. Sir, you said that F u plus G v is negative. But yes. Uh, taking, we, we should not be taking this argument from previous case, right? Because this time, are we not expecting steady state to be different? No, the steady state is the same. See, the earlier problem, the diffusion was not there. Okay. So, I had a particular steady state, U s s v s s. I have added diffusion, but I am keeping the steady state the same. So, the question is when I add the diffusion to the system, can the diffusion induce a instability? That is what we are asking. So, without diffusion, it is stable, the trace is negative. The steady state is the same. So, Fu and Gv are all evaluated at the same steady state. So, like he was asking, they are evaluated at the steady state. Now, the steady state with the diffusion is also the same. So, F u and G v, all this is being evaluated at the steady state, remember. All these derivatives are evaluated at the steady state because my Jacobian matrix is evaluated at the steady state. So, this F u and G v is at the steady state, which is the steady state of the earlier system. 
So that is the reason I am going to use the information from the earlier system. If this is another steady state, I cannot. The determinant of j, this guy is f u minus alpha square d u times g v minus alpha square d v okay, minus f v g u as the determinant and I am going to multiply this out, I get alpha bar 4 d u d v minus alpha square times what? d u g v plus d v g u plus f u g v minus f v g u. That is my determinant of the system. Okay. And remember all the uh, f u g v etcetera are at the steady state. Just to be making it clear one more time because I have done linearization, I have done linearization about the steady state. Okay. So, the partial derivatives are evaluated at the steady state. Now, what do we know? So, this partial derivatives are also going to be evaluated at the same steady state. What do we know? The determinant of the system, the earlier system was positive. So, this guy is positive, right? Given from the earlier thing, this piece is positive, okay? This guy is also positive, diffusion coefficients are positive. Alpha, uh, this is also positive and clearly the only way the determinant can be negative is if this is positive because this is associated with the minus sign then this if this dominates these two terms see look at this this is positive this guy is positive there is a minus sign associated here. If d u g v plus d v g u is negative, if this is negative, if uh, something is wrong, this one, d v f u, thank you, thank you. So, if this guy is negative, then everything is positive because there is a minus sign here. And that means the determinant can is going to be positive, the, de the determinant of the system with the diffusion, okay. That means then the determinant of the RD system is positive and my steady state is stable. Okay. If so in order for my if at all you want to have instability, if at all you want to have in instability of the spatially uniform solution, then this has to be negative, okay. So, for instability, so for instability, du gv f u must be positive and this is, is it a necessary condition or a sufficient condition? It is a necessary condition because just because it is positive you are not assured it will be negative. It has to be significantly large only then. So, this is a necessary condition just because this is positive it will not guarantee you that you will have instability, okay. This is a necessary condition. It does not uh, give guarantee uh, 
instability. Okay. So now uh, you already know something about F and G. What do we know? Some uh, trace condition. What do we know? F we uh, we know F u plus G v is negative. That's given to me, right? So now I want to see. By looking at this condition and looking at this condition, uh, when can this happen? When can I possibly have an instability? When can I possibly have a spatial pattern? Okay. If this is negative, I have two options. Both are negative individually, or one is positive, one is negative. Okay. If both of these are negative, then I cannot satisfy this. Agreed. Okay. If this F u is negative, G v is negative, then this will always be negative. If therefore one has to be positive, one has to be negative. Then no, one is positive, one is negative, and then maybe I can satisfy this condition. You understand? So uh, both F u and G v cannot be negative since then du gv plus dv fu will be negative always okay so we now you got a choice you can choose whatever you want i'm going to choose fu to be positive and gv to be negative okay so let's choose fu to be positive and G V to be negative. It doesn't matter. You can choose chosen it the other way. It really does not matter. Okay. So I'm choosing F U to be positive and G V to be negative. And uh, if that is the case, what exactly does this imply? Remember, F occurs in the mass balance equation for u du by dt is f of u comma v okay equals f of u comma v and dv by dt is g of u comma v right if the partial derivative of f with respect to u is positive that means as the concentration of u increases the reaction rate is increasing Okay, and that's typically what you expect if you have a first order reaction or a second order reaction. You say that the more the concentration, the more the reaction rate. So this is a normal behavior. Whereas for G, for here G V is negative. That means as the concentration of V is increasing, the reaction is rate is actually decreasing. Okay, so here this is as the V as it increases is actually slowing down the reaction. So in some sense, you can think of the species U as, in a, as an activator. That is, the more the U, the more the reaction rate. V is an inhibitor. The more the V, the lower is the reaction rate. Okay. So this is something which we have uh, understood now that in order for U to possibly have an instability, you need to have an activator and an inhibitor. Okay, and we have to do this analysis some more, but we'll do that in the next class. But all I wanted to emphasize here is U is an activator. Why? Because as the concentration of U increases, the reaction rate increases. V is an inhibitor. Why? Because as the concentration of V increases, the reaction rate decreases. So basically, this ha you need to have a combination of an activator and an inhibitor in your reaction system in order for you to actually have a pattern, if at all. 
But of course, this is just a qualitative argument. What we need to do is get conditions on the diffusion coefficient. Okay. 